This video illustrates how to factor a simple trinomial. A simple trinomial is one whose first term has a numerical coefficient of 1. In each of these cases, the numerical coefficient of the first term is 1. The first thing we do when we're factoring a simple trinomial is we define our a, b, and c. If the trinomial is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, the a is the numerical coefficient of the first term. The b is the numerical coefficient of the second term. In this case, that is a 2. And the c is the numerical coefficient of the third term. In this case, that is a 1. Then I ask myself the question, what two numbers multiply to give c and add to give b? In this situation, c is equal to 1 and b is equal to 2. So I am asking, what two numbers multiply to give 1 and add to give 2? Those numbers are 1 and 1. And in this case, they're both positive. Then I write two sets of brackets because the factoring of a simple trinomial will always be two binomials. The square root of the first term goes in the first position in each. And then I write the numbers that I found, plus 1 and plus 1. This trinomial is factored. If you multiply these two binomials by each other to verify, you will see that the result is the trinomial we started with. Let's do another one. Here, the numerical coefficient of the first term is 1. The second term, it's 4. And the third term, it's also 4. <clears throat> what two numbers multiply to give 4 and add to give 4? They are positive 2 and positive 2. I write my brackets. The square root of x squared is x, so I put an x in both of these positions, and then I have plus 2 and plus 2. This method still works when we have more complicated looking trinomials like this one. Here we have minus signs, and we have an extra letter b involved, but we use the same method. a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 1, and c is equal to negative 6. What two numbers multiply to give negative 6 and add to give negative 1? Figuring out the factors, both positive and negative of a number, is part of the process. But with practice, this becomes easier and easier. The two numbers that multiply to give negative 6 and add to give negative 1 are negative 3 and 2. I write my binomials. The square root of a squared going in the first position, I have a minus 3 and a plus 2, and now it's time to deal with that extra letter b. All I have to do is put the square root of this b squared at the end in this position here. You tag on the b to the second term in each binomial. You will find that if you multiply these two binomials by each other, you will verify your factoring because you will get a squared minus ab minus 6b squared as your answer. This is how we factor a simple trinomial. Here's another example where the numerical coefficient of a is not 1, it's negative 1. Can I still do the simple trinomial method with this example? There is another method called complex trinomial which is the subject of another video, that can be used to factor this expression. But there's also a way of factoring it with simple trinomial. The first thing that I have to do, though, is take out a common factor of negative 1. If I factor a negative 1 out of this expression, I get x squared minus 3xy minus 10y squared. Now I'm ready to perform the simple trinomial method with this trinomial inside the bracket. 
a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 3, and c is equal to negative 10. Asking my question, what two numbers multiply to give c and add to give b, means I am asking what two numbers multiply to give negative 10 and add to give negative 3. Those two numbers are negative 5 and 2. I'm nearly finished. The square root of x squared is x. I have minus 5 and plus 2. I have this extra y involved, so I have to tag on a y here and here. And I'm almost finished, but I can't forget that I've already factored out a negative 1. This is one of the factors of my expression. I have to write all of the factors when I give my answer at the bottom. If I multiply these three expressions together, I will get negative x squared plus 3xy plus 10y squared. So by going the extra step of applying a common factor, I was able to convert my trinomial into a simple trinomial and then successfully factor it using the simple trinomial method.